When he calls on me, I will answer him. I will deliver him and give him glory. I will grant him length of days. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Welcome to this celebration of God's love on the first Sunday of Lent. We rejoice that our journey has begun to Holy Week, to the cross, to the grave, and to the resurrection. In a moment of silence, let us confess our sins and the times that we have failed to love in order that we might worthily celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Grant, Almighty God, that through the yearly observances of Holy Lent, that we may grow in understanding of the riches hidden in Christ Jesus, and by worthy conduct pursue their effects in our lives. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated as we listen to today's readings. A reading from the book of Genesis. God said to Noah and to his sons with him, See, I am now establishing my covenant with you and your descendants after you and with every living creature that was with you, all the birds and the various tame and wild animals that were with you and came out of the ark. I will establish my covenant with you that never again shall all bodily creatures be destroyed by the waters of a flood. There shall not be another flood to devastate the earth. God added, this is the sign that I am forgiving all ages to come of the covenant between me and you and every living creature with you. 
I set my bow in the clouds to serve as a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth and the bow appears in the clouds, I will recall the covenant I have made between me and you and all living beings so that the water shall never again become a flood to destroy all mortal beings. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join in our responsorial psalm. Your ways, O Lord, are love and truth to those who keep your covenant. Your ways, O Lord, are love and truth to those who keep your covenant. Your ways, O Lord, make known to me, teach me your paths. Guide me in your truth and teach me, for you are God my Savior. Your ways, O Lord, are love and truth to those who keep your covenant. Remember that your compassion, O Lord, and your love are from of old. In your kindness, remember me because of your goodness, O Lord. Your ways, O Lord, are love and truth to those who keep your covenant. Good and upright is the Lord. Thus he shows sinners the way. He guides the humble to justice and he teaches the humble his way. Your ways, O Lord, are love and truth to those who keep your covenant. A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, Christ suffered for sins once, the righteous for the sake of the unrighteous, that he might lead you to God. Put to death in the flesh, he was brought to life in the spirit. In it, he also went to preach to the spirits in prison who had once been disobedient while God patiently waited in the days of Noah during the building of the ark in which a few persons, eight in all, were saved through water. This prefigured baptism which saves you now. It is not a removal of dirt from the body, but an appeal to God for a clear conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God with angels, authorities, and powers subject to him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. One does not live on bread alone, but every word that proceedeth from the mouth of God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. The Spirit drove out Jesus into the desert, and he remained in the desert for forty days, tempted by Satan. He was among wild beasts, and the angels ministered to him. After John had been arrested, Jesus came to Galilee proclaiming the gospel of God. This is the time of fulfillment. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel, the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. 
May the words of the gospel wipe away our sins. You may be seated. A very blessed Lenten season to you all. This past Wednesday, Ash Wednesday, we began our Lenten journey to Holy Week, to the cross, to the grave, and to the resurrection. And so it is only fitting at the beginning of this spiritual journey that our first reading would come from the book of Genesis, the very first book of the Bible. We are told in Genesis that God said to Noah, See, I am now establishing my covenant with you and with your descendants. You see, my friends, God is in covenant with us. That is how much he loves us, how much he cares for us, that he is in relationship with his very own creation. In the Genesis narrative, we hear about the flood that covered the earth and that God sent his bow in the sky, a rainbow, a promise that he would continue to remain in covenant with humanity, never destroying it. Let us take security. Let us stand on this covenant with God, knowing that we are loved, and that each time we see a rainbow in a sky, we can be reminded of God's love for all of us, for all of humanity, and his promise that he will see us through every situation and obstacle we face. We need not fear that he hates us. We need not fear that he will destroy us. For he is a loving God, and his rainbow promises this to each of us. No matter who we are, no matter our skin color, no matter our gender, our orientation, no matter where we were born or where we have come from, God desires to be in covenant with us. The psalmist tells us, Good and upright is the Lord. Thus he shows sinners the way. He guides the humble to justice. My friends, while we remain in covenant with God, we sometimes get off of God's path for our lives. Sometimes we allow the static of the world, the chaos that surrounds us, the bigotry and the hatred to consume us and tell us that we are not God's own. But this is a lie from the pit of hell, for God is good and upright. He shows us the way and he guides us to his justice, his justice that is based on equality, forgiveness, mercy, and love. And therefore we say, Lord, we seek your love and truth. Help us to remain close to your heart. Help us to have confidence that we are never on our own, not only during this 40-day Lenten journey, but at any point in our lives, even if we find ourselves in the wilderness, as did Jesus, if we will open our spiritual eyes, we will see that God yet ministers to us through the angels, through neighbors who are compassionate and loving and inclusive and supportive. Yes, even in the desert, we are never alone. Even in the desert, we are never forsaken. For God's words are faithful and true, and that rainbow is a perpetual sign of his promise to remain in relationship with us in the good times and in the bad times. In our second reading today from St. Peter, we hear these words, Christ suffered once for sins. My friends, this is the mystery of our faith. We cannot save ourselves. We are human. We are broken. And therefore, Christ went to the cross and he laid down his life in order that we might receive salvation. Yes, each time we look at a crucifix, it is also a promise of God's covenant with us, that God's only Son, God incarnate, God made man in the flesh, stretched forth his arms and laid down his life for you, 
for me, for each of us, so that we might know how very loved we are, that God will go the distance to remain in covenant with us, that God will spare no expense to be a part of our lives. Upon realizing this truth and love from God, we should do all that we can to remain in relationship with him. And my friends, that is what the Lenten season is for, a season to shut out the static of the world, a season to shut out the naysayers, the hatred, the homophobia, the bigotry, the willful ignorance, and instead to set our eyes on Jesus Christ, the author and perfecter of our faith. How can we do this? We learned on Ash Wednesday, my dear friends, we do this through prayer and penance, through fasting and through almsgiving. Yes, each day of Lent, be sure to pray. Take time while you are in your wilderness to pray to God just as Jesus did. Take time during the next 40 days to confess and acknowledge your own brokenness. Acknowledge the darkness that sometimes rises up in your own heart. Imagine Imagine what it is like if we set all that to the side and give God control of our lives. Imagine what it will be like if we look to the rainbows in the sky, if we look to the crucifix that hangs on our walls and we remember, yes, God loves me. Yes, he is with me, both now during Lent and throughout the year. Prayer, penance, fasting, Yes, throughout Lent, we are called to give up meat on Fridays. It is a very small sacrifice which helps remind us the season we are in. Letting go of meat on Fridays gives us the opportunity and the reminder to kneel before the crucifix in our home and to worship the embodiment of love and truth, which is Jesus Christ. And yes, during this season, we must give to others. For Christ died once for us. Christ gave himself for us while we were yet sinners. And therefore, during this season of preparation for his death and resurrection, we must give to all those around us. So consider during this Lent how you can give to others, how you can make a difference, how you can reveal that God is in covenant with others through your willing obedience and almsgiving. Jesus went out into the wilderness, into the desert for those 40 days. He was God made man in the flesh, and yet he still went into the wilderness. My friends, if even Jesus had to endure difficult times, if even Jesus had to endure the temptation of the evil one, then we can't expect to escape it. But what we can do and know in our hearts is that God is with us, that we will not fail, that we will triumph if we follow the example of Jesus who said man does not live on bread alone, but every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. And what are the words of God but love and truth and covenant and relationship for each of us? So during Lent, increase your prayer life, increase your giving, confess your sins, fast from meat, and set your attention on Christ so that when the glories of Easter arrive, we have hearts made pure, ready to celebrate the Paschal Feast. You may be in a wilderness right now, but you're not alone. Jesus is with you. He will see you through. Never give up, my friends. God be with you this Lenten journey and bless you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
My dear siblings, do we truly believe that God is in covenant with us? Do we recognize that even in the wilderness, we are never forsaken and the Spirit will always guide us forward? If we believe this, let us proclaim with faith-filled hearts the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. On this first Sunday of Lent, let us offer up our prayers, petitions, and thanksgivings to the Most Holy Trinity, for we know that God is always with us, just as he was with Jesus in the wilderness. That the church may continue to preach faith and repentance. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that the leaders of nations may embrace God's covenant of peace and justice. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That people who are attached to material things will learn that no one lives on bread alone. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that we will renew our baptism through a humble confession of our sins. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That Christ will bring our dead to eternal life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for the intentions we hold in our hearts and the names written in our book of prayers. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty God, creator of the universe, creator of each of your children, your only begotten Son went into the wilderness, and yet you sent forth angels to minister to him. May we recognize that you are constantly present in our lives, that your angels minister to us, and that we will never be forsaken. We praise you and glorify you for this truth and for your love through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, the fruit of the earth and the work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, the fruit of the vine and the work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. 
Blessed be God forever. With humble spirit and contrite heart, may we be accepted by you, O Lord, and may our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Wash me, O Lord, from my iniquity, and cleanse me from my sins, that I may go about thy holy altar. Pray, my sisters, my brothers, all my siblings, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Give us the right dispositions, O Lord, we pray, to make these offerings, for with them we celebrate the beginning of this venerable and sacred season of Lent. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. By abstaining forty long days from earthly food, he consecrated through his fast the pattern of our Lenten observance, and by overturning all the snares of the ancient serpent, taught us to cast out the leaven of malice, so that, celebrating worthily the Paschal mystery, we might pass over at last to the eternal Paschal feast. And so, with the companies of angels and saints, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, we sing the hymn of your praise as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full, full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and from the world's beginning are ceaselessly at work, so that the human race may become holy, just as you yourself are holy. Look, we pray, upon your people's offerings, and pour out on them the power of your Holy Spirit, that they may become the body and the blood 
of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, in whom we too are your sons and daughters and all your children. Indeed, though we once were lost and could not approach you, you loved us with the greatest love. For your Son, who alone is just, handed himself over to death and did not disdain to be nailed for our sake to the wood of the cross. But before his arms were outstretched between heaven and earth to become the lasting sign of your covenant, he desired to celebrate the Passover with his disciples. As he ate with them, he took bread, And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to all of them, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. My Lord and my God. Precious Jesus, be with us during our Lenten observance. In a similar way, knowing knowing when supper was ended, and that he was about to reconcile all things in himself through his blood to be shed on the cross, he took the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine and once more, giving you thanks, handed the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. My Lord and my God, Precious Jesus, you never forsake us nor leave us. The mystery of faith We proclaim your death, O Lord and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of your Son, Jesus Christ, who is our Passover and our surest peace, we celebrate his death and resurrection from the dead and look forward to his blessed coming. We offer you, who are our faithful and merciful God, this sacrificial victim who reconciled to you the human race. Look kindly, most compassionate Father, on those you unite to yourself by the sacrifice of your Son, and grant that, by the power of the Holy Spirit, as they partake of this one bread and one chalice, they may be gathered into one body in Christ who heals every division. Be pleased to keep us always in communion of mind and heart, together with Francis, Pope and Bishop of Rome, first among equals, and Will, our Bishop, Father William, our Associate Pastor, the Society of Mercy, and the faithful of Holy Name of Mary Catholic Chapel, especially Ken, Jean, Esperanza, and Mike, Carmen, Melissa, and family, Father Daniel Minucci, Kristen, and Andrew, who seeks a job, and our first in-person Mass being held on this Sunday in Towanda, Pennsylvania. 
Help us to work together for the coming of your kingdom until the hour when we stand before you, saints among the saints in the halls of heaven, with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joachim and Anna, her righteous parents, with the blessed apostles and all the saints, and with our deceased siblings, especially Kimberly and Hanero, whom we humbly commend to your mercy. Then, freed at last from the wound of corruption and made fully into a new creation, we shall sing to you with gladness the thanksgiving of Christ, who lives for all eternity. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, O Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always and with your spirit. Knowing that God loves us so very much, let us offer a sign of peace with one another in our homes. Peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us, grant us peace. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, who by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, through your death gave life to the world, free all of us by this your most holy body and blood from all our sins and from every evil. Keep us always faithful to your commandments, and never let any of us be parted from you.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Behold your Son. One does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes forth from the mouth of God. body of Christ. The blood of Christ. Let us receive the Son of God in spiritual communion. Please join in prayer. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Renewed now with heavenly bread, by which faith is nourished, hope increase, and love strengthened, we pray, O Lord, that we may learn to hunger for Christ, the true and living bread, and strive to live by every word which proceeds from your mouth. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. 
a very blessed Lenten season to you all. We encourage you to pray, to confess, to give alms, and to fast throughout this season in order that you might grow in the love and truth that God has for you. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. May bountiful blessings, O Lord, we pray, come down upon your people, that hope may grow in tribulation, virtue be strengthened in temptation, and eternal redemption be assured. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. We invite you, if you are looking for a place to give your alms, to send them here to Mary's Chapel in order that we can continue to do our bread and egg ministry outreach and continue to reach many folks with the love of Jesus and Mary. You can send in your tithes and offerings using Venmo at Holy Name Mary or visit us online at holynamemary.org forward slash donate. Thank you all for journeying with us and helping us to be the hands and feet of Jesus in this world. And now with joyful hearts, let us sing to Jesus' mother and our mother as well, Immaculate Mary. Immaculate Mary, your praises we sing. You reign now in splendor with Jesus our King. Ave, Ave, Ave Maria, Ave, Ave Maria. In heaven the blessed your glory proclaim, on earth we your children invoke your sweet name. Ave, Ave, Ave Maria, Ave, Ave Maria. Your name is our power, your virtues our light, your love is our comfort, your prayers our might. Ave, Ave, Ave Maria, Ave, Ave Maria. We pray for the Church, our true Mother on earth, and beg you to watch o'er the land of our birth. Ave, Ave, Ave Maria, Ave, Ave Maria. Let us pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Pray for us, Our Lady of Sorrows, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. A prayer for the clergy of the Society of Mercy. O Lord Jesus, bless the work of the Society of Mercy. Keep its members faithful to your teaching. Help them be instruments of your mercy. Grant it an increase in vocations, so that your holy sacraments may be offered to all in need. O Mother Most Holy, intercede for its members and guide them to holiness. Amen. O Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, 
have mercy upon us sinners.